Hi everybody! Hello! See you, Genji! Hey, Gil Kid, how's it going? Yay, we're doing an endgame review! Endgame review! Boom, boom, boom! In theaters now. It's incredible! Two happy things, our first Marvel review, and some less important news for you. You are a new dad. I'm a new dad. I'm a new dad. Oh, Thank you, Gil. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. Mazal tov. As of yesterday. And I said, you know what I need to do? I need to go record a podcast about <laughs> Marvel movies. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to do yeah. eight and a half years ago when I became a dad. I was like, I need to record a Marvel podcast. But I had to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm confident that little Roman Black Ganji, mm -hmm. that's his name, is going to be a, a, a Marvel fan and a little web slinger. And he's going to be like, oh, my God, once I can hear and understand language... <laughs> I want to hear my dad talk with Mr. Gil Kid. Yes. Kid Drone, excuse me, about... Oh, Gil Kid sounds pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. good. It's, it's me, my but, email, you know. Gil Kid. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm super... I'm very excited to be a new dad, and I'm also excited about Endgame and this podcast. And so, so that's going to be like a family story now. There you go. Do you know what my dad did the day that I was born? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's going to be a story that he's going to tell. So we want to talk about Endgame, because I think most of the people who came to listen are more interested in Endgame than in uh, our stories about being dads. <laughs> I don't know. They have weird tastes. What's wrong with these people? What's wrong with them? Uh, yeah. So let's get right to it. Three minutes in, right to it. <laughs> <laughs> so Endgame, I want to start at the beginning. First of all, we agree. Great movie, fun movie, smart movie creative movie let's start at the beginning all right for me for me the whole movie is basically a master class in how do you turn an intergalactic cgi fest a war between aliens and all kinds of humans and superheroes into an intimate emotional personal story mm -hmm. i'm just in awe in how they managed to do it. Mm -hmm. Straight out the gate, the first scene, you're waiting. Like the, the last movie ended with all, with half of the universe getting erased after an incredible uh, war that lasted half a movie in different planets. That's right. And it, here you have 30, 40 minutes, a personal story. What's the name of the guy with the bow? What, Hawkeye? Clint Barton? Yeah, with his, with his, uh, with his daughter. The way he was teasing his daughter, I was like, I, well, already I had a tear in my eye. This is yeah. exactly a, a thing that I would do with my daughter. And that's a recurring theme, right? Dads and daughters. I think that's just like takes out of you some emotional soft side. All, our, all the guys that are watching this, this movie. Mm. Him and his daughter. Then the Ant-Man with his daughter that mm. hasn't seen him mm. for five years. Boom, cried again. And Iron Man with his daughter. Yeah, yeah, a lot of daddy daughters, absolutely. And it's all very effective, very effective. I love you 3000. That's like a thing that any dad has with his daughter, with his son, whatever, just like a personal thing. And then when he said, "Is I'm not competing with my daughter with you about the, my da our daughter's love, but she loves me 3000." <laughs> <laughs> and you're in the like 7 to 800 range, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is a, so it's all it's very realistic and very simple, but not simplistic. Right. And I was like already in it. I'm already in it. Before we start with the time traveling and the and the spaceships and the missiles, 30 40 minutes, I think they were thinking like we got all the audience. They're already tuning in. Right. They're they're gonna listen in no matter what. Right. Yeah. So so let's take them for a ride and let's make it let's make it count and pay off the ending because you get emotion invested from the get go. That's right. Yeah, it was interesting. So my the, I actually saw it twice. I saw it opening night and I saw it opening night in in Brooklyn. There was a, a kind of screw up with the with the theater with the projector or whatever right and so people were getting really restless at the beginning oh there was no previews which actually was amazing you know, you're just sitting in a theater ah. it was totally empty but we were also restless and then the the hawkeye scene comes on and you know how it just drops in it's just a really cold open and yeah. it felt like they just accidentally started playing something in the middle of the movie right uh so the the theater goes nuts like they're about to riot. Like people are screaming at the projector and they shut it off. 
<laughs> so oh my they, God, they shut it off and the, and uh, and then one of these these guys come comes out you know and he's like he's like guys guys that's the beginning of the movie and they play it again and we watch so we were like halfway through the scene they stopped it and then like started playing it again and uh, wow. it, it got a little hairy there for a second yeah wow wow yeah that was such a beautiful scene it added to it you know it was like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. actually yeah because it it, it actually uh, makes the point that it was surprising and right. like out of character to start to start this way yeah you know that was uh it reminded me and i didn't know because it was opening night i was like oh it's did they somehow figure out how to like mandate no opening uh Uh, previews for for endgame i was like wow that's brilliant you know because like because because directors and filmmakers try to fit like star wars right had that opening crawl that was really um oh, really okay. cinematic and but he actually lucas got in big trouble with the directors guild because you weren't allowed to not have the opening credits in the opening of your movie and he got fined i don't know he might have gotten censured from it he might have left the director's guild it was a big deal he went to bat to say no my movie's got to start in this different way because it's gonna it's gonna ease you in it's gonna you know what i mean it's gonna suspension of disbelief when you see all these like directed by george lucas before a movie it takes you out of it star wars is gonna start yeah. just and that's so iconic now and he just so i was just one i was thinking at the time wow this is like their version of that they're saying no no previews but i no clearly not There's previews. But yeah. if somebody thought of that, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I had previews yeah, yeah, no, here in previews. Tel Aviv. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just one theater in Brooklyn that messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's a very unique experience. Yeah. So so it starts out, right? With, it's like the... What's this show called? Uh, I know it's in Hebrew. Anotarim, like with uh, the show where, where half of the humanity... Or like a third of, you, of humanity disappeared. I don't like that show. It's like uh, oh, it's very, very sad. Oh, yeah. Uh, the HBO um, left, left, Leftovers. Like, there's no speed. It's yeah. very, very slow, right? Ant-Man goes to see the monument, which looks a lot like the Holocaust uh, monument in uh, Berlin with the cubes. So here, but mm. it also looks like, right, like the Vietnam Memorial or something of the sort. It's a very good, uh, very good design for a memorial. I don't know who they got to design uh, the fake memorial, but it's, uh, it's very good and very realistic. Can you hear me? I lost you. Where are you, Theo? All right. I'm going to clap just in case that helps. I don't know. Just in case. <laughs> it's like a, it's a mythological thing, you know. It's like, a, yeah. It's like, yeah. Where, you know, the clap works in a mysterious way. <laughs> that's that's that sounds you know like an std actually uh, <laughs> yes. okay now we're gonna have to do to keep that in the conversation all right <laughs> the, the clap works in mysterious ways folks um actually in very clear ways it's very, very clear how it happens, but okay whatever. go on go on though okay so speaking of the clap let's talk about the snap boom oh boom. Yes, 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 yes. This yes. is this is the place. This is the shit here. Um, all right, so we're f- talking about the beginning of Endgame. I w- my I was blown away by that. What's effectively an opening act that gives you everything you thought the entire film was going to give you. Right, the opening act where you literally see Thanos's head leave his body. right uh, the you know that was what I thought was so brilliant so it's you know the Russos are confronting what all these filmmakers are dealing with when you know telling stories on properties that are beloved by all these fans and that have certain expectations right and you see Star Wars handling this terribly right which is you got the last Jedi film that Oof. that said, You know, you got in order to defy expectations, right? This very, very adolescent understanding of what it means to defy yeah. expectations, right? Yeah. Defy expectations mean Luke Skywalker, Luke Skywalker has to be the opposite of his character. So, yeah, you're right. I didn't expect him to not be Luke Skywalker anymore. That you defy. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. That doesn't right. make a good right. storytelling. That's right. ridiculous. Right. And the emperor has to die in the second movie. Right. Okay. Right. In Whatever. the in the second Whatever. act of the second movie. Exactly. Yeah. And 
So just because you defy this, expectations doesn't mean you've done good storytelling. That's ridiculous. Right. Like it just, the, you know, yeah. I wouldn't expect Ray to be on the screen picking her nose for two hours. That you defy my expectations, <laughs> but that's that's and a I shit story. And I wouldn't expect uh, I would expect Arya to come out of nowhere and kill the Night King. And why is John? So why did John come to life? Why did John come to life? I don't know, dude. Don't to be a political a political pawn is that uh, the, the magic works to keep him whatever as a political guy or was it supposed to be something transcendent and magical and mythological what the fuck but i'm, I'm digressing let's go back to being no, positive but the point, and happy no but the point is well made that defying expectations is really hard to do and it's not an excuse to tell unsatisfying stories that Boom. and the Russo brothers got that you have to wow. do both. It's not just about quote unquote fan service. They say this is like a negative. No, if you've reached certain heights in storytelling and fans are coming for those heights, servicing those fans means telling an amazing fucking story. Right? Exactly. I don't understand this term, fan service. I'm not feeling I don't feel like I'm getting good service <laughs> when I'm getting the fan service. I'm like, no, I don't like the service in this place. I right. like the fan service when they have uh, Thor be a fat, d- depressed guy, drunk right, guy. Right. I'm thinking, this is incredible. They are very, very brave. They take this character and they change it around, but it's still him. It's yeah. still him, but different. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, my one, my one complaint about the Thor storyline and Endgame, my hmm. uh, biggest thing that worked for me less than some of the other moves they made, but okay. I don't understand how you can't get a decent prosthetic uh, fat stomach. I mean, like ah, the the I liked it. The the it, but I'm saying stomachs like move when you breathe, right? That thing uh, just looked like you could tell it was fake from a mile away. And like right. in a movie where you've gotten like new heights of CGI, <laughs> space like you made me believe in like a a nine foot tall space titan that killed half of humanity, and you can't make me believe that a guy who's not fat is fat. Like, come on. <laughs> okay, I get your point. Right, it is the move. You're right, it is the move. It didn't it move. It's just like yeah. he's wearing... But whatever. I, I No, I did like him being a... I like the concept of being a fat guy. I think they, they might have they might have gone a little over the redi- line of ridiculousness, like where he's like sobbing in every scene. But I really like the idea. Like that was the right arc for him. Yeah. I think it was also a little bit just like relieve the tension of the first 30, 40 minutes that were very, very sad, very intense, yeah. but not intense because there was war. There was It's very silent. And I just like, ah... Let's have fun with this guy. And now somebody's bullying his uh, alien friend. Ha ha. It's very, now let's just relax a little bit. Relax. This is still the story right. that we know. It makes it more balanced, I think. Right. No, I agree that it was it was absolutely the right concept. I thought execution, they they went... You know the the, the old line from, from... What was that movie? Uh, you know, never go full retard, right? I, obviously, it's an offensive mm-hmm. line. But the idea being that, yeah. like, you got to go half retard. You got to go, you know, he, I felt like it was kind of full retard that, like, like Thor became, you, you know, um, yeah. a bit of a yeah, maybe for the, on. Yeah, maybe for the bigger fans, it's, uh, it was uh, different than, uh, than for me. I don't know. Like, I don't mind if, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, Agree to disagree. Right, right, right. Fair enough. So just uh, backing up a little bit, talking about that opening, that opening act. So what you basically had was instead of like your typical three act movie, I would say it's maybe a four or five act movie. Right. And that opening act um, before the five year reset was was so intense. So first you bring in you bring in your Captain Marvel. Right. You, you sort of challenge the power rankings of the Marvel Universe and you bring this kind of godlike figure in and she's all glowy and badass and all this right. stuff. And she's like, well, you know, let's go kick. Let's go get him. Let's go kick his ass. And they're like, we already tried that. She's like, well, you didn't have me. And I was kind of like, all right, I'm with it. I like it. Um, And they do just that. They answer a bunch of questions about like that people were wondering about from the teasers, like what's happened to Thanos since? Like what's why is his hand so damaged? Because you could see that in the previews in the teaser that his his hand was damaged and it didn't look like that from the gauntlet was damaged. It didn't look like that from at the end of um, infinity war. So, but boom, we get our answer right away. He, you, he's, is the gauntlet's damaged because he used it to destroy the stones. Uh, they, they have this really nice moment. One thing I haven't heard talked about a lot is how incredible the storyline was for Nebula, right? 
um, I mean, her arc was just was so spot on throughout the film. She's one of the most underrated and best characters in that film. Um, but, you know, he, he expresses some regret and then Thor, boom, goes for the head, right? Uh, and all of us, and you're yeah. all sitting there in the theater like, what the fuck? We thought what we were coming yeah. and that this was going to happen and that they were going to come up with all kinds of ways to make this shit interesting in three yeah. hours. And yeah. and instead, you chopped his head off in the first 15 fucking minutes. And that's when I knew, man, right. that, that just got me in my chest. I was like, I don't know where I am now. Right. I mean, they have they have defied my expectations by instead of instead of delaying the gratification of, you know, what I want to see as a fan, which is Thanos get his head chopped off. Instead, they give it to me right away. And I'm like, now what? I got what I wanted. And now what? Right. Yeah. Everyone's still dead. And so we're right there with the rest of the characters five years later. Right. It's very human. So it's like whatever. Somebody killed your a member of your family. And even if you get revenge, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You're like, now what? You're in the wilderness with those characters. You got the thing you thought you wanted, which was Thanos, you know, re- revenge on Thanos. And it got you nothing. It got the characters nothing. You don't know where the movie's going now. And we're just there, right? So I felt like Oof. the challenge yeah. in storytelling, how do you get your audience, like, emotionally where you need them? Uh, it was just an inspired decision. It was an inspired choice. Yeah. We don't even know who our villain is anymore. We're in this, you know, and we're right there in the support group. And boom, it was a Joe Russo or one of the Russo brothers is the first face we see uh, when they in the in the group meeting um, who he plays the 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 guy talking about going on his first date. That was one of the directors um, of the film. And, you know, just making it real. Right. You never get real people in these movies. I mean, you get real people as superheroes right ah the yeah. day that was one of the that was one of the brothers that's one of the brothers that was joe it was either joe ah. or i can't remember uh, i think joe yeah joe was ah okay talking to captain america and captain america giving him whatever, the support uh, group whatever the support right. group okay, okay he's okay, also okay. Now, also yeah. the first like acknowledged gay person in a marvel movie which i don't know people are excited about i guess um and some people think are, it's not that exciting uh, but whatever it was it, cool the scene worked um <laughs> yeah it did work And Captain America is always like, he's, he's great for the job because he's always positive, right? Let's think positively. This has to work. We have to make things better. That's like his character just trying to make things work no matter what are the odds. Yeah. So I felt that was, uh, that was in character. And we saw that also throughout, throughout the movie. He's the one who's pushing to... Okay, so everybody died. Yeah. But let's try to, to fix things if we can or whatever. Move on if we have to, whatever. Well, I liked, and I liked how they kind of, they, they had him telling everybody, helping them move on and then kind of coming back to uh, Scarlett Johansson and kind of being like, yeah, we're not moving on. Like, that's not, that's not what we do. Uh, there's no moving on from this. We, we lost in a way that is, that is you know, uh, unacceptable, that is, you know, unfixable. And they really, I mean, like one, another challenge, right? Another kind of metaphysical external challenge is how do you sell the stakes of this movie when everybody knows Spider-Man's coming back? Not only do we know Spider-Man's yeah. coming back, we've yeah. already seen the trailer yeah. for the next Spider-Man movie, mm-hmm. right? Thanks to Sony, I'm guessing, who was like, no, no, we got to get this trailer out. Why? For a July movie? Why? I don't know. I think Tony's, Tony is fucking with Marvel or something. But they, so we know Spider-Man's coming back. How do you create stakes? Well, how you do it is through, is through incredible storytelling and through, you know, just like touching base with each of these characters as, to, as time has gone by and the weight of their loss and failure has crushed them, right? Uh, crushed them in, in, except Iron Man, right? Who, who actually found some redemption, whose failure was, was maybe the most, you know, the most intense and immediate and personal like he because he failed and he got his ass kicked and he yeah. literally lost in peter arms. parker yeah. yeah in his arms right and probably the most right. moving moving scene in that film i thought um yeah but he did lose he lost his iron iron manness right he just became like a regular guy a regular dad yeah funny witty guy so everybody lost something that was uh, central to their uh, core character Right, right, great, a- absolutely, right, all right, except Captain America, who never changes, that's his character, he's the guy that never changes, 
and and we'll talk more about him in a separate uh, separate podcast yeah and also I think that the fact that he never changed I don't know if we want to get to it now to to his conclusion uh yeah I mean well, let's touch on it but I think we we do a more a more in-depth dive on that in the, the in other the one right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah yeah we're right, a separate one yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna do a separate one so It was, he, he never changes so we were talking right you're 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 a big Marvel guy you got me more into Marvel and you were telling me he's the self-sacrifice guy so he has to be the one that sacrifice himself at the end but it was so interesting that for his conclusion they did the exact opposite he chose himself at the end he was right. like no I'm gonna take care of myself this is the right this is the one thing he hadn't done yeah yeah So that made all the other uh, whatever uh, how do you call it like two flat line <laughs> your heart flat line. Yeah. flat line yeah. f- flatlining arc it actually made it retro- retroactively better no you're so right because it was you're so right they that this movie is so I mean I, I hate to totally fanboy out bro but <laughs> this movie is so good it made five or six movies that were okay substantially better. That's how exactly. good that this movie exactly. ma- it fixed other not only was it incredibly it fixed other movies I, how do you do that how do you do that <laughs> exactly and and okay we're gonna also elaborate that on the difference on the on the separate uh, podcast about him but the fact that he didn't want to tell uh, to tell anything about his girl right that like, you want you want to share something and he was like no that's just for me that's personal right so the guy that is totally impersonal he's Captain America. Yeah. Right. Now he has something that is just for him, not for anybody else, just for Steve. You know, he's keeping that for himself. And the reverse, the opposite, that's for Iron Man, who was the showman for everybody, but also very self-serving in a way. Right. Just like his vibe is just like a, like a little bit egotistical and, right. um, and thinking about himself. He was the guy that sacrificed himself for everybody. And his last line. So Captain America became Steve Rogers, mm. and Tony Stark. His last words were, "I am Iron Man." So they went on the uh, on the opposite directions, mm. and then he became the self-sacrifice guy that everybody honors. Mm. And I was like crying again. Bravo. I was like, "This Bravo. is so good. <laughs> This is so good. This is so good. How yeah. can a Marvel fantasy, a fantasy comic book movie can be this good?" Yeah. Who are these guys, these Russo brothers? You know, I tell you what's crazy. They come from Arrested Development and Community. They come from, they made these, the little, these little, these uh, little, oh my goodness, half hour comedies. Uh, oh, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's incredible. It is, inc- it is incredible. What, 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 it, what it speaks to is, I think the bigger thing here, right? We, we've taken a big kind of step back. So I'd say the big, the, the big thing here is that what they are is very talented filmmakers, film buffs. Who were also comic book fans from childhood right and what mm. what they understood because one thing that I you know as a comic book fan from childhood comic books probably you know in my adolescence got me into storytelling and you know I, yeah, I'd, I'd veered away from them and you know I've been a writer and writing you know my main thing you know writing uh, in prose and fiction and novels but comic books was that was that initial love of for 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 story uh, and yeah. just being just being transported into another world and you know these what I always notice about these comic book movies and even even good ones is that they still they still had a general antipathy and sometimes hostility toward what comic book storytelling is like right these you know this this concept of comic books and how the industry works is you know it's turned into you have these kind of You have a lot of characters who you know titles that you know people that everyone kind of understands can never really die uh, you have these yeah. big events once a year or you know hopefully not once a year but sometimes once a year and then those events will touch all the individual story uh, arcs for the rest of the year kind of thing mm. right and that's the sort of that's a style of storytelling and while comic books themselves can you You know, you're not going to get nearly the same kind of character work as you've got in Endgame. Don't get me wrong. You, they're, you know, the characters are kind of, they're iconic. They're kind of brush-stroked. They can be good sometimes, but more, than, more often than not, it's the, the real driving brilliance is in the conceptual, in the artistic, and then trying to, you know, you know trying to surprise their readers. Um, but what, these, what, 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 what Kevin Feige, who oversees the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the Russo brothers kind of understood is they said, how do we take this concept of storytelling... This you know contemporary mythology 
of comic book characters yeah. and add the you know you know sophisticated uh, yeah, screenwriting yeah. character yeah. character you know to yeah. to that style as opposed yeah. to what you saw I think in other comic book movies even good ones even the Dark Knight trilogies from Nolan is this is a cinematic this is a a, a, yeah. a filmmaker led uh, yeah. idea of what a cool what this character could look like as opposed to how how do we make the comic book concept lead and then the filmmakers add their talent yeah. to it and that's what I that's what I think the shift is here yeah. and why you have something that's what 22 movies now and they keep getting better that's never happened yeah. that's never happened right um, right yeah. so they put their ego aside and were like we're gonna serve the story and make the comic books that we would like to to read and see and I have to contrast it again I'm sorry to Game of Thrones when you have two people who don't really care about the story and they came into it from the from the red wedding whatever because it was very surprising so they got all the wrong uh, all the wrong lessons from from that and they were just like trying to impose themselves on the story hmm interesting interesting yeah that that that's that uh, I see I see where you're coming from I I think you know I think it's tricky because I you know and I when I go back and look at watch those early Game of Thrones seasons and you know it, in some ways they respected the source material more than any other adaptation that's ever been yeah. made and so for them to yeah. go yeah full retard yeah they go <laughs> yes <laughs> so, the, the, okay, but, but but let's not rant about it. I, I'm, I'm ranting too much about it. Ranting no, no, no. But that you know what that was that was beautiful. Um, Maybe you should give them a, a second chance. There were there's a theme of second chances. Uh, Dude, honestly, the, like we've given them like maybe 16 or 17 second chances at this point. Yeah, yeah, Clearly, yeah. I'm just yeah. segueing to back to the movie. I'm not giving them any. Oh, uh, okay, chance. okay. <laughs> all right, yeah. So, all right, let's. Yeah, maybe let's let's maybe go into the the middle of the movie and some of those arcs a little bit. Uh, how did you feel about the Black Widow versus Hawkeye duel for who gets to die in this movie? Right, that was maybe now that you mentioned it, that was maybe the one thing that I less enjoyed, but mm. they did they did do it very well in terms of it was surprising each time you thought this one is going to win, this one is going. They both they both. Both their arcs could have uh, ended there. I think I would have preferred him to die and than her. Yeah, I, th- I, w- I thought it would be more satisfying. Well, but I think I think in this weird way it works conversely that her being the, you know, that it was just more impactful because she was just a more a better character. I think for her to die mm. had more weight. If he died, like I don't. I wouldn't have really cared to be honest with you. Uh, so I mean, I think if you had, yeah. if you wanted to kill someone, that would matter. Uh, that going yeah. with her, going with the one who's already, who is slated, by the uh, way, for her movie to come out next year, so, or maybe, yeah, really, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought she was going to become like Nick Fury, the female Nick Fury. That's because that's what she did right after after he died. She became like the head of Shield or whatever. It was it wasn't Shield. She was kind of running the Avengers, I think. Um, Avengers, but oh, okay. uh, but whatever. Uh, fair enough. I don't know. We'll see that the mo- her movie may not. We don't know what they're going to do. It may take place in the past. It may be about... That would be interesting about her... You know, they're always talking about Budapest. Maybe it'll be about Budapest. Or, mm. or maybe they'll... You know, I mean, one they, they one thing about this movie, they have established a lot of mechanics that make it very hard to write out of. I mean, you basically establish a precedent that anyone you want to come back from the dead, well, you could just jump back in time. And, <laughs> and you don't even need the time stone because they have time machines that are in people's vans. You just go back in time, grab them when they're alive, pop them back into the future, and Gamora's back, everybody. You know, so... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> they look, they went for it, and there's, you know, time travel. Yeah, it works. It works, but it may it may make things hard going forward for the next writer. Time travel, like you know, J.K. Rowling even said this because she had a big time travel fix in one of yeah. her books that yeah, if they one. just used it in the next book, Voldemort yeah. would never come back, kind of thing. Yeah, and it was yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it yeah, creates. Yeah, I didn't problems. like that part. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that part actually in the in the, in the third Harry Potter. Right. Yeah. So, so we, we were talking uh, about about the arc by uh, by Captain America. Yeah. So obviously there was this uh, big, large wink for the previous uh, elevator scene with the new elevator. Oh, scene. that was amazing! Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Captain America is evolving. He learned. He's evolved. Exactly. 
Yeah, diplomacy. Yeah. Now he's using diplomacy instead of just kicking everybody's ass. He's like, no, I can just. Well, do you, also do you know the the the, the nod? The, that was a comic book nod. That was that little scene accomplished an incredible Ooh. amount of things. So educate uh, me. So yeah, so there's this very controversial storyline called Secret Empire in comics. It's maybe a year or two old, and in it, it turns out that Captain America was fucking Hydra all nah, along. What the fuck and it's like that? this iconic, you know, that's what, I, that's what all the fans said. It was very, un, people were very pissed off about it. And of course, and I'm like, dudes, it's fucking comic books. There's alternate universes up the ass. Like, what are you, what are you worried about? Like, they're going to figure it out, but whatever. It's Captain America has, is in the end of a, you know, the big drop, the big bomb okay. in the end of one of these comics is Captain America says, hail Hydra. And it's like, Duh! and everybody <laughs> lost their shit. I'm like, come on. It's like everyone has been evil in the comics like and good. WWF, in the WWE. <laughs> yeah. And it's like when you have, when you literally have a universe where there are millions of alternate universes, why does everyone get so upset about this Captain America? Of course, he's not the real Captain America, but whatever. Uh, people got upset about it. So the Russos, knowing that, put that Hail Hydra line uh, in. And in my theater, that may have been the biggest people lost uh, their shit when he said Hail Hydra. Or maybe it was just me and I was screaming. I got to say, in the... <laughs> in Tel Aviv, nobody understood that. It was a very, it was an incredible experience. They, it was an incredible experience that in this theater, there was, you know, because it was opening night. It was downtown Brooklyn. And, you know, we're already a mouthy kind of people, and especially at the movies. And, it, I mean, it was like you were in, you were watching a basketball game, bro. Wow. It was like when 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 these lines hit when captain america grabbed mjolnir and i mean people were screaming so loud that i couldn't hear myself scream wow. like it was <laughs> it was it was a really it was a it was a special ah, kind of experience wow, it was so um, different in tel aviv so different i bet i bet i bet um well you know it's also new york city it's kind of the home yeah. home base of yeah, marvel yeah, comics yeah. you know it's like uh yeah 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 for us it's like people who live Who have, like whose imagination takes them to other places right it's not it's not local right we want to escape to another place that's the thing right. that attracts a, a different kinds of people than the people than what than what attracts New Yorkers I guess to watch this movie sure yeah yeah so about so about Tony Stark right so he ends his arc right by uh, sacrificing himself but he also evolves in a nice way. So he, of course, shows affection to, to his daughter. Okay, that's easy. That's a father, uh, father-daughter thing. But then when, uh, hmm. when Peter Parker uh, c- comes in, I liked it that he was so different towards him. Like, he's, like uh, Peter Parker is all erotic, right? Blah, 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 and he just, like, just hugs him. So he also yeah. learned yeah. something. Just like show your affection in the most mm. direct, simple, and clear way. No talking, no babbling, no being a smart ass, no 3,000 or whatever, just like, although the 3,000 is, was very cute, but this was just like showed me like the evolution, just like hug him and just like show him that you care about, about him, what he didn't know a few, a couple of movies uh, ago, right? He saw that uh, in the first movie, he saw that he didn't care about him. Ah, you're not even here mm, mm. with a like with a robot, mm. but then he was there. Mm, mm. Nice, nice girl. Yeah. Ah, thank, you, yeah. thank you. I mean, for you know, for for um, for me, that sequence was uh, it was a uh, it was it was kind of emotional. I know this sounds I know it's a comic book movie, um, but we we mentioned earlier, you know, that I'm I'm a new father, mm. and uh, for whatever reason, between. You know having a kid having having a son here in brooklyn and the the, the last couple spider-man movies the into the spider-verse the, i've just like for some reason associated spider-man and my son like i literally have had i have a spider-man onesies hanging yeah. in my apartment <laughs> that he's gonna wear so so that father son uh, thing right i mean it hit me look i'm not gonna lie it hit me in the other movie too when he was when he did the first of all that was ad lib by the way uh the the um Uh, the kid uh, acted, you know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then, he, you know, he vanishes, you know, that wasn't in the script. So hats off to him for that, for making me, you know, yeah. uh, grown man, uh, exceptionally emotional. When the sort of, li- when the, when the, when the little mystic circles started popping out in the final scene and then you had Wakanda yeah. come out, I'm sure you can imagine how people reacted Ooh. in Brooklyn. And then, yeah, man. <laughs> and then you had fucking... 
and you had uh, Wakanda came out, and then you had the Guardians yeah. come out, and then you had Spider Man swing in, uh, and I swear to God, my heart was in my throat uh, from the. I don't, I don't, you know, it's a little personal what I went through at that moment, but let me just say that the these are height, these are. These are the things you don't expect to go through when you exactly. when you go to a Marvel movie. So, you know, yeah. you, you don't. Yeah. And if you compare that, like, okay, so maybe it's gonna top uh, whatever uh, Avatar or Titanic or maybe not, whatever. But it's going to be the best movie out of all of these uh, highest grossing movies. Like a really mm. good mm. movie mm. with a good story, and uh, and so and some it was somehow a good small movie and exactly. a good huge exactly. movie at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because they set yeah. the stage like, for the guys, first man. like th- quarter, a third, whatever of the movie, it could have been just like a yeah. TV show about about loss yeah. and stuff, and, every, and, yeah. And, yeah. and nothing is happening. And even like the little the little look that right, the teenager on the bike is uh, going past Ant Man, and then he has a kid, and then the, the the teenager looks at him and said, "Where is everybody? What happened here?" And just like the look that he gives him doesn't have to tell him anything, just the look, and he's like, "Oh." Mm. Some really tough shit yeah. went down. Can I can and and can I give some props here to Paul Rudd? Uh, the and 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 again give some props to to the filmmakers for knowing how important it was that they sell the the tragedy of the five years going by and how much they relied on his acting. Yeah. To communicate it yeah. right because you had to re-experience that the loss of what what happened and communicate the expanse of the world, the loss in the world and what happened in him. So his, his performance was just, you know, he's not a huge character in these films, but his performance was just so good when he was running yeah. through the wall, looking for his daughter's name and he sees his own name. And then when he holds his daughter for the first this is time, what I like, all of yeah. those moments, all of those moments and just, just given that you couldn't have given that to just anybody right God. you had to have somebody who really knew their shit and paul Boom. rudd was just he just knocked it out of the Boom. park um and like and got you got you emotionally where God. where the storytelling really needed you to be um wow, good for you know him. take this big uh right good for him and, and to have the humor to communicate the the time heist yeah, 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 story yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, i mean yeah yeah, Oof, yeah. good for that him was, uh, this is just like a guy from right? uh what was his first movie? Like the the cult thing where he with uh, I forgot the name. Ah, no, with Alicia Silverstone. Mm, yeah, I don't. Clueless, remember, Clueless. But... It started like in Clueless. Clueless, is that right? And oh now, shit! <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right, that's right, that's right, like, that's right. like the biggest movie ever that ever happened. You're like a yeah. huge anchor point. Ugh. Yeah. Boom. What about the Hulk? Did you like the Hulk? They, they also changed changed the Hulk. That's what got most of the people in my theater laughing. Mm. I, you know, I did. I liked it. I thought I th- I didn't think the CGI was anywhere near as good as it is for Thanos. Mm. Um, and I thought that no, you know what? I liked it. I really liked how he was. He really was like that. Hulk's personality was was there too, right? That that some of that. You know, they started revealing Hulk's personality in the Thor Ragnarok movie, and I thought they made him a really compelling character. Because this guy, he's only in a way been alive for like you know a couple of of years, right? Is is uh, on this earth, and you know he, that he evolved, but that you that you had both of them. It wasn't just Banner, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Green, and you could see is that he had a different sensibility right. and a different sense of humor, and that all worked. That and you could yeah. see that when uh, when the whatever the bald woman. Uh, Mm, yeah, the ancient one. Yeah, took him out of his body. Yeah, when he right, yeah, then he became neurotic and more dark. Right, he's a little bit complainy and stuff. Mark Ruffalo, right, when he's right. the doctor, Ruffalo. Ruffalo. But yeah. when they're together, yeah. he was just like took the good things, like the energy, took the energy, the Hulk energy, but the, the whatever, the smarts, the brain from uh, from the doctor. That was a good combo. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought that I thought that worked really nicely. I thought those little little bits about how you know. You know, tr- you know, trying to get his um, his his arc in there. I mean, you know, we talked a bit in our when we discussed uh, Infinity War about how they solved the challenge of of you know, community of telling stories for all these characters by by centering around the Thanos arc. And this time, obviously, they did not do yeah. that. And so, you know, they still had that challenge: is how do you get everyone's arc in there? And they give you these nice little touches, like towards the end. Uh, when the Hulk was talking about how hard he tried to bring back Black Widow when he did the snap 
uh, and that he couldn't. You know, it just reminded you that the the personal stakes yeah. in all of these relationships, even you know things that weren't necessarily like essential to the heartbeat of the movie, yeah. but that when he did the snap, he was trying to bring her back and he couldn't. Um, I thought that that was nice. Oop. Another another cool thing was how they figured out how to get Thanos back in this movie after uh, they cut his fucking head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even like more dangerous. Right. And it was like Thanos in his prime. It was yeah. Thanos before he went through all those, you know, all that the stuff we yeah. talked about, his hero's journey. Yeah. So he is like warlord conquering yeah, fucking Thanos yeah. with a helicopter blade as a weapon. Yeah, yeah um, who's gonna enjoy destroying the earth. I'm gonna enjoy it this time. Yeah, fuck all that like that that contemplative Thanos yeah. shit. Yeah, he's um <laughs> And and that is straight comic book stuff. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna see a, an inventive way of, of oh like you know a time travel movie that figures out something an idea like that. Like oh, okay, yeah, you went back in the past, but guess what? You got to deal with now. Yeah, Thanos from that past, right? right? And and him. Yeah, that was smart. Yeah, it was ab- absolutely brilliant. So you got you got the you, you got the villain. You got Thanos. You had to kill Thanos twice. He got to yeah. kill Thanos twice in this movie, right? The worst villain, you know. Um, so you got the d- double satisfaction mm-hmm. in the reverse. Uh... I also I want to shout out to uh, Asi Oren. I just did a video with him about uh, the battle for Winter for the Battle of Winterfell and how it compares to other cinematic battles. So he told me so Thanos. That's like a Tetsa Tetsa. I don't know how you say it in English. That's like the the Greek word for death. Thanos. Uh, Thanatos. 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 Yeah. And like so, yeah. where where they take the what's the stone? The life stone? That's what it's called. The soul stone. Uh-huh. So there was like a, a, a symbol of like the the death, the Greek uh, Thanatos, whatever symbol. It's like a circle with a line where you have to sacrifice somebody. That was like uh, mm. on on the mountain, on the cliff. And right. also, it was a, a few of the symbols. Uh, maybe we're gonna do a video about it uh, for the White Walkers, whatever in the Game of Thrones, like the death mm. symbol. So that was. Uh, he just told me about it like a, a few days earlier, and then I went to the movie, and I was like, "Ah, hey, this is it! <laughs> I can see the right. symbol here, right here. Somebody's gonna die." I got a bit of a bit of lore, com- very deep comic book cut lore that I picked up in this last film. That uh, that so Nebula mentions the planet Vormir, right? Which was where the soul yeah. stone is the place you're talking about um and so what they're starting to do is build the celestial universe in uh in the marvel cinematic universe so what what, what that is is in marvel comics there is this this hierarchy of what are essentially god like or god beings um and one of them is mistress death right okay and so the thanos story actually his his original motive from the comics is that he is in love with mistress death. Ah. So he, uh, he gets the gauntlet and the infinity gems and does the snap to kill half of life because more he loves mistress death. <laughs> exactly. You got it. He's in love with mistress ah. death and he wants to do her this service wow. of giving her more dead people. And wow, that's very mythological. Yeah, it is very mythological, and I could see it's a little silly. They went with the sort of hard data-driven, like overpopulation yeah. argument for Infinity War, which I get. Yeah. Um, but what Nebula says in Endgame is when she's talking about where the planet Vormir is, she says it's in something, something this the, the celestial domain of death. Okay. So she's established that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now, the entity of death exists Ah, Uh, and that's where Vormir that's where that planet is where they get the soul stone so I thought that was interesting Uh, and that that they're clearly building towards you know they have Mm -hmm. the Eternals movie coming out next year Ah, so they're gonna you know they're going for it and they're going for and who's gonna do so now the Russo brothers are not gonna make every Marvel movie right they can't make three Marvel movies a year now I'm guessing no I think they're I think they're done for the foreseeable future so yeah so now it's gonna be like a black Captain America, right? Did I get it right? He's going to be Captain America? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's going to be... Cer- certainly seems yeah. to be. Yeah, so... I I don't know that he's going to get a movie. They might they might uh, do a TV series with him and uh, the Winter Soldier. Uh, a TV series, right, for the, Disney, for the new Disney thing uh, channel. Right. Going. Okay. Yeah. I would like to see a movie about him, to see him also develop. I have... Yeah, I don't feel like... Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't, I'm not interested in him enough 
to see him as a lead a movie at this point. I mean, I'd be psyched if it came yeah. out, but as far as what I know about yeah, him, yeah, right now, yeah. you know, they haven't, yeah, yeah, yeah as of now. Uh, but you know, they they showed with Guardians of the Galaxy that they can bring in a pretty unknown uh, title and yeah. make it yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. hats off. And that's also um, now that was that's a movie, the Guardians of the Galaxy of the Galaxy Three. Now that's a movie I want to watch with Thor there. Oh yeah. Oof. Oof, it's yeah. gonna be super funny. As Guardians of the Galaxy, yes. oh, I want to see, I want to see uh, Taika Waititi's y- 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 next uh, Thor movie very much, and uh, and the James Gunn like that that uh, Guardians yeah. film, all that together has so much potential, so much talent. Oh right. my god! And now we want to see uh, how he's gonna uh, how he's gonna get his girlfriend back, right? So there's uh, something interesting uh, to look forward also to that. Oh well, here that that was another part I loved how they did that with Star Lord, how they reset the clock with him and yeah. Gamora, and all she said, she's like, "This is the guy." <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was so uh, funny, that was, right? Between him and a tree, yeah. that was so funny. <laughs> It was between him and a tree. Also, like this, so, so these guys, they're just like legitimate, legitimately funny. They're just funny. Yeah. The movie was just, just funny. funny. The whole movie was funny. It's just great great energy uh the score the look the the aesthetic I mean and those comics are pretty good actually I went I checked them out and they also have a nice energy to them but but not mm. not at the level of what James Gunn brought it no. to um okay but uh, Theo let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, wrap it things up wrap yeah, it up with my yep. daughter there yep. let's do it and uh, yep and my son your son waiting for me your son yeah man what <laughs> There was also actually a theme in the movie, right? Be who you are and, know, and not who people expect you to be or who you think you should be. Mm. And I thought that was also part of the arc like for, uh, for Captain America and, uh, and Tony Stark. Just like he's like, I'm going right. to be me. I'm going to be me. Right. 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 I'm going to try doing living this life thing that Tony was always yeah. telling me to do. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great line. But we will talk more about that in our next podcast. Yeah, we'll yeah. dedicate a whole podcast for Captain America. Super looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Do you think we, we have enough stuff to, to talk about Iron Man and what he's gone through? Or... Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So let's try to do both of them. Captain America yeah. for sure. Hopefully yeah. we'll get the, the other one. Yeah. So thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this conversation, I think you should give it a five star rating. I yeah, think, please. I think you should. Please. I mean, come on. Yeah, that was a, that was a good conversation. And and tell your friends. I mean, I mean, if I mean, I mean, if you want. I mean, if you if don't you want, want, like, just don't do it. Yeah. The, the, like that's an option. That's an option. That's an option. But like, I I feel I feel that they want to Theo. I feel it. Yeah, I, I know, but I don't, you know, like want to be like like begging. They're desperate, you know what I mean? No, so I'm just no begging. Say, like from a confident place. From a kind of like yeah, you know you want to do, yeah. and if you don't want to no. do it, then don't do it, and then and then go on with your life. No, and there you no, go. but don't yeah. don't give them an out. See, don't give them an out. They want to do it. I'm just <laughs> you're stepping you're stepping on my game here. No, <laughs> you want to to hit the five star rating, everybody, and also tell your friends. I know your friends would love to to hear this conversation. Tell your friends or. D- Or don't <laughs> and if you really want to support uh, what we do you can go to got academy uh, to uh, patreon.com slash got academy but yeah and, and I think we can we can tell them that we want to take this uh, podcast in the future and just like and like separate it from uh, the got academy podcast and just have it have be its own thing hmm? yeah you know if they if they if they if they show up and support us and Then uh, mm-hmm. we'll have you know all the motive in the world Boom. to you know convince my my wife uh, <laughs> and and mother of newborn Ooh. child uh, to uh, let me invest more time in right. these podcasts and yeah. do it regularly we can do it regularly. Can do it right yeah oh, do okay. it every week that'd be amazing that would be amazing okay so let us know let us know how you feel so thank you Theo wow I was so I'm, I'm so happy because I like, I wanted so much to talk about it and we couldn't find the time right I'm Tel Aviv you're I know in, uh, you're I know. in New York you just had a baby boy and I was like I can't tell him that uh, but we said we're gonna do it on Friday Theo <laughs> <laughs> no it's sync it it synced up nicely with all these other things I have to do and I'm heading back to the hospital and I'm so yeah. excited and it gave me more energy yeah, to yeah. want to go nuts and talk about end game to be honest with you you Um, and the moment that you said yeah. they're gonna do it I couldn't say but Theo I'm gonna have dinner at my parents I can't do it because nothing <laughs> is as important <laughs> as what you just had happen to you uh, you're here with me in spirit and we you know we appreciate it and we appreciate all the all the all the love that we've gotten yeah I didn't hear that I'm sure it was incredible 
Could you want to repeat? <laughs> I lost you. We appreciate your your. I forgot what I said actually. Your, but your 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 presence and spirit, we feel it and we appreciate it and all the love we've gotten since okay. Little Roman Black Angie came in the world and uh, oh. and all the listeners, we feel your love too. Uh, Hello, so thank you. Roman. Hello, Roman. Welcome. Welcome. So this is like uh, Tony Stark and his dad, right? So your son is going to listen to it. And just like he's, bar- he's, he's, he's alive, he's not, not been alive for 24 hours and already you'll do whatever it takes for him. Whatever it takes. You got it. You got it. Yes. So thank you, everybody, for listening in. And stay tuned for our Captain America summary, character summary. We're going to have so much fun. I'm really, really excited about this one, too. So thank you, Theo. Have fun at the hospital. Say my love to your wife and kiss your son on the forehead for me. All right. We'll do, Gil. Many, many thank yous. Many, many thank yous. And goodbye, everybody. We will see you soon. See you soon.